Right now, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has uh, obtained an arrest warrant as it begins the extradition process of um, former Minister of Petroleum Resources, Dezani Alice Maduke, from the United Kingdom uh, back to uh, Nigeria to face the 13-count charge bordering on money laundry leveled against her by the Antigraft Agency. Now, the Commission further revealed that the money laundry charges for which Alison Amaruke is answerable to that the EFCC covers jurisdiction in Dubai, United Arab Emirates, United Kingdom, and the United States of America, and also, of course, Nigeria. Reports have it that the former minister appeared before the Westminster Magistrate Court in London over an alleged £100,000 bribe. Um, now, the district judge, Michael Snow, granted her uh, bail to the sum of seventy thousand pounds you know before the bill came there was there was a bargain yeah. you know it went from one amount mm -hmm. until it got to seventy thousand and then further imposed other terms yeah seventy thousand pounds i beg your pardon and then imposed for, um, other terms on the former minister including an 11 p.m to 6 a.m curfew yeah. an electronic tag to be worn by her at all times uh, you know the tag also mm -hmm. Let you know this person has a crime against them, uh, which I think is embarrassing. Uh, and then seventy thousand pounds surety to be paid before she could leave the court building. Oh well. Uh, still with us, we have Chukuma Okoro, uh, public affairs commentator, and Charles Ideho, who is also a public affairs commentator and a journalist. Uh, I'm going to start with you, Charles. Okay. Diazani, uh, Diazani uh, the case has been lingering for a while. She was since sick. 20, since 2015. Since 2015. She was sick. She recovered. And, uh, you know, she's, she's back in the eye of the storm, as it is. Uh, I'm living large, living large in the, in the UK. <laughs> because we understand that uh, the area, uh, Johnson Wood, I can't recall what you call it. Yes, uh, it's yes, an exclusive, yes. exclusive area in the UK. Go ahead. Yeah, she was she was a one time president of, of OPEC, so she probably you know had very that. very expensive where she's living. <laughs> so she's living large as it is. Living large. But then, <laughs> do you think, do you think the EFCC, from what we have seen in recent time, has the capacity to genuinely, uh, uh, genuinely prosecute a gov a former government official, especially in the person of Diazani? on the scene, Madre King, as it stands right now. When it has to do with uh, criminal jurisdiction here in Nigeria, I, I, I'm only, I'm only sure that the way it turns out in most cases, or in nearly all cases, uh, a similar case in point, which can also make reference to, is uh, uh, my older brother, my brother from Delta State, uh, the half of Bender. That's, uh, what's his name now? Uh, Ibori. Ibori. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ibori had over 100 count charges here in Nigeria that... Uh, he went over there, just one count charge that he was nailed. You remember that? And he was mm -hmm. still over there. Mm -hmm. Now, look at how demeaning that this man, ha I mean, be subjected to a, a demeaning level. It, it, it reminds you of the medieval time when if you stole, a bell is hung on your neck as he's going on the market. Everybody jam, hey, leave, nah, me this so, nah, me, I'm the thief. Please leave the room. Yeah. So everybody will be avoiding you uh, like, like, like leprosy. It's, that's the same way. Electronic tag on you. When they say, oh, Come on, what am I saying? This, this lady, oh, this is a thief. Everybody will be, begin to avoid her. And the UK court also had labeled her as a, a flight risk, which is why they put this curfew in, in place. That she can't, if you leave her, she might fly away. Because if she could buy her way, they are even afraid that even the UK people, the UK system, she could also, also compromise the UK system, which is why they have, if you, if they, they, they put a tag on her. And then we so be avoided, her. and then the curfew. They also put there. So you see system. how demeaning it is. I was saying this before I came here. I was I was on the radio when I had to also mention that even here there's there has been this belief before now. Of course, this is this what Desani is doing. Is, uh, is it has been like that. That women are even more. Women have only been more trustworthy when it has to do with uh, political. I mean, political office holding. You put a woman there, but uh, Desani, look at her. A hundred thousand pounds, and they say it was he collected. She collected it in cash. Not only that, the case in point you also referred to in the U.S. You know how much is it? Fifty-three point one million dollars, mm -hmm. which also hanging on her on her neck. Then the U.K. the, the Dubai, I can't recall the, the figure. 
But you see, the question you ask if the EFCC has the muzzle, I they say yes, they say no. The yes is if they indeed want to do it, they, they, they could do it. But the no is when you look at how often they have been compromised. Again, they also rush without even having a watertight um, uh, alibi and all that, or uh, 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 evidence. They now rush to the media and all that. Then if this man as powerful as he is, as you said, government official, and he comes in here, are you not thinking that he might end up in he plea bargaining, back. plea bargaining and all that? Mm. Okay, you have so much money you took from us. Give us some, we go ahead and all that. Mm. I can say this. I, I, I wish I wish that what I'm going to say now, at the end of the day, I might be wrong. I want to be wrong at the end of the day that this man may not go to jail in, in Nigeria. Darije is there who went to jail the other day. He won election in court in, in, while he was in prison. Uh, has. So there have been cases that I, have, I remember and I'm, I'm frightened that even if you are able to extradite this man here, he may just end up in. They go to court today, they go tomorrow, they say, okay, she has to go for medical uh, treatment, they have to do this, there are technicalities, uh, there will be lacunas, and then they just, okay, you know what we do. Then, how are we sure you job? The John Nation will not say, okay, they are prosecuting their daughter. Mm -hmm. That's also there. Then, when the job will come, start coming up, uh, they are starting to come up, this one say, no, this is a, uh, so so person did it, what did you do? Now it's a job. Now only, now only she's still, then it now becomes another ethnic problem. So, I don't know, say, okay, what should we do? Let's just go for plea bargaining and then bring us some and then keep some go back to, to life. That's that's my that's my fear. All right, All right thank then. you very much, yes. Charles. Now to you, Chukuma. Um this um issue of the Zanis, um, you know, um illegal practices has been on for a very long time, you know, and um now that she's in the UK, she's also accused of the same thing. Of course, um nobody is uh, guilty until proven so. Uh but do you think that um, this arrest would actually warrant, um, uh, um, I mean, what is the role of this uh, arrest on, uh, uh, in the whole extradition process? Yes, Joy, uh, I think uh, Charles took, took it in my mouth. I was about uh, to say that the, the FCC is, is trying to do two things. One, to make some kind of uh, political glory out of trying to bring the Ziani back to Nigeria. And at the end of the day, the whole thing will end in a plea bargain. So the federal government wants to recover some of the money they can trace. That is what the ESEC is just doing. Fortunately for us, the crimes for which she is being tried have multiple jurisdictions. She can be tried in the US, in the UK, in Nigeria, and in, in Dubai. If you ask me, since we have started outsourcing our judiciary or our judicial proceedings, since we have started outsourcing them to outsiders, especially the UK and the US, if you ask me, since these crimes have multiple jurisdictions, let them try her in the UK because it is easier to prosecute her there and get judgment that will benefit Nigerians at the end of the day. Some of these charges are no longer flimsy. They are known to have been committed by her. They have records about the 100,000 pounds she collected, $53 million, which I converted the other day and it gave me 100 and something billion Naira, has been recovered from the US. So since we have started outsourcing our judicial proceedings, let's continue with this one. There's no need bringing her back, because if you bring her back, a lot of things, will start, an interplay of so many factors will happen. And at the end of the day, it could take more than four, five, six, seven years to try her. Most of the people that are ministers have EFC cases hanging over their neck, yet they are still ministers. The governors, the same thing, people that served in government before, some of them are in Senate, some of them principal officers, and they are government operatives. But just one that was caught in the UK, he was jailed, and he served out his term there. All right, so now, do it's, you think... It's unfortunate. Sorry to interrupt you now. Yeah, sorry, the other day... The, so, can you hear me? Yes, 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 we can. Can you hear me? Yes. The other day, uh, a Kenyan friend of mine 
called me. We met in one of these international conferences. I was struck a chord. We became very close friends. He's a journalist, too. So he said, Chukuma, what's going on in your country? I said, ah, my brother, so many things are going on. What in impact? He said, uh, you understand that our former president, our former president and the our current president and the former vice president have relocated to Chicago. I said, to do what? He said, ah, about uh, this uh, certificate for you. I said, who told you? He said, ah, bah. The thing is everywhere now. Uh, don't you have internet in your country anymore? So that is who we have become. We have outsourced our judiciary outside. So let this one also, let her be tried in the UK. Okay. If she's found guilty, they have what a way of say? recovering all those money. Okay, but what, what does that say about again, our own judicial system? Is it that... Uh, decrepit in, uh, you know in um in such a manner that we have to you know go out to get justice since our own system is too messed up to actually achieve such feat exactly what you have said that is who we have become and that is what we are telling the world probably we'll ask uk courts to come and superintend over us here so that we'll be able to get good judgment that is <laughs> okay. what we have we are telling the world all right i was going to and it speak to the other I was okay. going to ask you this question. I was going to ask you if um, um, the ties, because we do know that uh, the president's son, Sheyi, uh, was implicated uh, in, in, this, in this case for, having, uh, for a company that belongs to him uh, having been used to purchase uh, a property worth about $11 million. Uh, will that in any way uh, play out? Will that, will that affect her case in any way? Or if she's if it's brought down here to Nigeria, that is that is exactly why the EMCC wants the case to come back here. Why do you so uh, that how, it could be how do done and busted with? How do you mean? How do you? Mean? No, what I mean is that if it, if if that particular case, mm. if that particular case is tried in the UK, mm. and there's a link between her and the president's company, it becomes a big issue. For the Ran president and, and his son. Okay. So you think you, the EFCC you is trying to... Do you get the point? Okay, so you think... Are you, are you now so it's, it's, saying the EFCC is trying to, you know, um, close it up, find a way to uh, wrap what, things it's, up? It, it, is a possible, it, is, it is a possible explanation of what is playing out. All right, then. They probably don't want her to be tried in the UK because if they try her in the UK, a whole lot of... Other, company, other things will be revealed. It's like a Pandora's box will be opened. You remember the William Jefferson case and the article of Abubakar? I said it about 100 and something people all over the world went to jail because of that case. It was only in Nigeria that nobody went to jail. Nobody's career was damaged. Nothing happened to anybody in Nigeria. When other people became fugitives in their countries, people were running from one country to the other because of that case in the Netherlands, in the US, nobody in Nigeria was indicted. But people went to jail in other countries. So it's possible. In fact, you have brought it a, a very new perspective, very fresh and possible perspective to this argument. It is very possible that the ESCC is trying to look for a way to bring back this case to Nigeria so that it could be dispensed with completely in Nigeria and some people we may we be made to take the fall, while others will be made to go free. It's very plausible, and I'm going to start looking in that direction. <laughs> uh, sorry, I beg your pardon, Charles. Charles. Yeah. Well, I, I, I don't, I, I'm not going to be going too far away from what he said, and I'm also going to be repeating what I said before, that uh, this case uh, being brought to Nigeria will not serve us. So it's, it will be an ill wind that will not blow us any good at all. And uh, we may not, Nigerian people, whose um, uh, common patrimony was stolen, uh, allegedly by uh, this woman, will, will not get justice. Uh, those people who, I don't know, will go, will, will, be, will enjoy the whole thing, will be people who have been fingered to be part of it, and just like you mentioned someone, the presence and all of that, so that those people will also be covered by the, um, as, you, the as you fear, the system will be messed up over there. Then judges also have become also very compliant uh, to, uh, to corrupt, 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 corrupt practice and all that. So these are, this is an amalgam of this and that, uh, the, or what you call the port period of this and that. At the end of the day, uh, as Okoro said, uh, it may just be, be uh, desirable that uh, Diziani is, um, you know, the, her case tried there, jailed there, and then, because I know her, 
Well, the money she stole has been frozen since 2015 about in, uh, in the U.S. So that, no, in, 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 in Britain and the U.S. Mm -hmm. So we can begin to ask that it be repatriated to us here while she's serving the jail. But bringing her here, as I said, the case is most likely, if I rely on precedence, not one, not two, not three, that the case might, I mean, at best, end up in plea bargaining. She may not go to jail in Nigeria. Mm. And then we also understand that some, some luxury goods have been uh, uh, seized. Yes. And some of them, I think, auctioned yes. at yes. some point. Yes, exactly. At some point. Mm. But uh, lastly now, um, is the court, the court in the UK, would they be compelled to listen to the EFCC, uh, listen to the EFCC's extradition plan? Is there anything that would compel them? Or can they say, look, we want to do this our own way? No, it's, not, it, they, I, I don't, it's an application. They've okay, applied yes. an application. Can they now, be... when you apply for a job, you don't compel that brand to hire you. They look at the merit of your application. If you say, okay, if, for instance, as I said, it's all, I mean, it has, not only in Nigeria, it had infraction, it also had infraction against the UK government. But if the UK government is okay, but they, they should be against our interests. We know they might retain her. Okay. So I don't think, I don't think that application has any, any compelling cross mm. to it to say she must be brought down. The UK can turn that, they can turn, turn, turn down turn that down. Uh, application. Okay. As, as I say, it's an application. They could say no. Uh, we're interested in this case because if fashion was also caught by her uh, to our own, uh, own system and all that, let us just, after we have done what we have to do, we run the court, but we can now uh, hand the baton over to you. You come from where we stop. Uh, that's the business. They are, they are, we can't compel them to. All right, so let's, let's have your final thoughts now on yeah. the topic shared. Well, my uh, final thought on this is that um, we must be able to put in place a very, very tight uh, 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 what I can, uh, this governance, uh, corporate governance, yeah, we're looking for that word. Corporate governance in a system where you make it difficult for people to steal, knowing that once they steal, it's difficult to recover. At mm. best, you take you get back about 30 percent, you ask them to go with it and see no more. But they don't stop stealing. Ibori today is living, I mean, Ibori, Ibori is, if I'm not mistaken, maybe one of the richest men in the in Delta State or in Nigeria, but she, he's enjoying his loot. Today, you can't even call him uh, an ex convict and all that because he might, he might, he might, he might, he might, he might sue you. Might, he might sue you and all that. <laughs> so, all we need to do, rather than chasing or fighting corruption, we should prevent corruption from happening. We should prevent it. You know, the, at the incubation stage, you, you, plug, you plug a hole, you block the hole. Because mm. once it's committed, you now, the state will also lose. You lose money to theft, you lose money to filing the case because, you know, you have to be, you know, paying lawyers, paying all this stuff. Because Nigeria is also spending money to get uh, design, to get this case, uh, uh, you know, discharged. So you know that it's going to be very costly. You are losing money through what somebody has stolen. You're also losing money pursuing the case. So why don't you just put a, 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 a very beautiful and watertight uh, corporate governance in place where to make it very absolutely, maybe almost 95% 90, difficult for people to steal. That's the that's that's the only way. That's the best way I think that this issue of corruption can be dealt with in Nigeria. All right, thank you very much. Yes. Now, um, Chukuma, let's have your final thoughts, please. All right. So we do understand that uh, uh, he has left the uh, the link there, yeah. but we must say a very big thank you to uh, Chukuma Okoro, who is a public affairs commentator, and Charles Idehu, who has joined us uh, physically in the studio. Who is a, a journalist and also. Uh, public affairs commentator. Thank, thank, you. thank you very much for, you for being with us on the program. It. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll get into business, entertainment, and then sports.